Charlie, I'm really looking forward to today's Family First. With the holidays coming up, many people are looking for a way to give back. And two doctors are here and say, what better gift than giving a deserving couple the family they've always dreamed of? Joining me are Dr. David Olive and Dr. Elizabeth Pritz. They're the co-founders of the Wisconsin Fertility Institute. Thank you both for being here this morning. Thank Pleasure. you. Now, first of all, you both have also gone through your fertility battles, and I think that gives people a lot of comfort when they come to you for help. Tell me a little bit about your experience. Yeah, so we really understand what our patients are going through. We sat uh, in, in, on the other end of the table from the doctor. We had all of the treatments. I had treatment all the way up to in vitro fertilization, the test tube baby mm -hmm. deal. And we got married, and I was not quite ready to have children. I was a career woman. I, I married later. Mm -hmm. and, and Dave was just... Dave wanted his family and he was trying to talk me into it. Mm -hmm. By the time I was ready to have children, it was too late. I was past my fertility prime, mm -hmm. and, uh, but we tried anyway. And we were unsuccessful, but we tried. But you know, and my sister went through the same thing. I got permission uh, from her to mention this. She said the same thing. You know, we're in our upper 40s and she said, you know, Christine, we were always told back in the 80s, oh, go out and get your career. Don't worry, advances in medicine, you can have children later and then well, here we are. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about egg donation. Who are you looking for to be egg donors? The youngest and then the oldest. What's that time frame? Generally, we're looking for women who are between 21 and 30, usually in good health, hopefully in good health, uh, who have the desire to actually give this gift of family to other women who can't have their own children because of problems with eggs. How do you screen a woman for, quote, good health? Yeah, the, the government actually mandates how we do this, and there are a variety of steps that are involved. One of the things that we do is we have them fill out a 22-page questionnaire mm -hmm. about themselves, about their lives, about everything that involves them. Uh, we also have a mandated requirement that they send in their medical records. We review those. We do testing also. We do sexually transmitted disease testing. We do genetic testing. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have psychological screens also, all mandated by the government, all necessary to have that information to transmit to the prospective parents. Especially for those medical records. And you did touch upon this, but if someone is watching, what would make a woman not a good candidate to be an egg donor? Well, certainly anyone who has severe medical problems, mm -hmm. someone who has a genetic problem or something in their family that might be hereditary, uh, those are, are specific problems that we see fairly commonly. Mm -hmm. And although they might still qualify in some circumstances as being an egg donor, they are unlikely in those circumstances to be chosen by prospective parents. Now let's talk about the actual process. How does a woman or how do you prepare a woman to be an egg donor? Does she need to take any kind of special hormone pills? What is that process like for the woman? Yeah, so she'll go on birth control pills until she's ready to start the process. At that time, she'll start taking shots, one shot a day for six days, a second shot a day for another six days. So 12 days of shots. They're small needles, but they're still injections. She'll be growing her eggs during that point. And when the eggs are mature, then she'll take another couple of shots that'll force those eggs to get ready to be retrieved. She'll come in, have a retrieval approximately 14 days in, the whole cycle, and then she's done. Those shots are administered at the doctor's office or at she, home? She does them herself. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about the actual day that those eggs are, what would you say, harvested? What is the procedure like for that woman, and is it painful? We do refer to it as egg harvesting, yeah. but it's, in fact, a minor surgical procedure where we actually use ultrasound and take a needle, guide it into the ovary, through the body into the ovary, mm -hmm. and suck out the eggs basically over approximately 20 to 30 minutes. It would be painful, except that we use anesthetic. Mm -hmm. And with that process, it, it's not very uncomfortable at all. Now, what about that woman? Can she, and I know I'm focusing more on the woman because this is about egg donation than the prospective family sure. that would receive that gift. Would she be able to know when her egg has been created into life? Would she be able to track that child? Would she know who that couple is that received her egg? 
It depends on how the process is carried out. We have both anonymous and known egg donation. The anonymous process, that woman will not know. She just gives the eggs and that's the end of the job. And who decides that, whether it's anonymous or known? The intended parents and the institution that's performing the egg donation. Some people will actually bring their own egg donors, maybe a cousin, maybe a friend, maybe a coworker, mm -hmm. and in that situation they know who it is and they'll know everything about what's happening. Well, I could continue to ask questions on this all the way up until 7 o'clock. Very quickly, uh, is there payment for that woman who donates an egg, and what is it? Mm -hmm. $4,500 for each donation for that woman. But it's interesting. Initially, we thought it would just be the money that would draw these donors to us. And there's a, a huge amount of altruism in these donors as well. So they really do give it as a gift. It's not just the money. Dr. Pritz and Dr. Olive, thank you so much from the Wisconsin Fertility Institute. Very much appreciate your time and talking about this issue that I don't think has received a lot of coverage at, uh, here locally. Yeah. If you would like more information, you can go to our website, NBC15.com. Just click on news links. Thank you again. Thank Thanks. you.